down goes Muhammad Ali, a young, ambitious fighter whom defined excellence at the age of 12 of being the greatest heavyweight fighter of all time. But yet, before he could ever earn the right to fight for the title, he was knocked to the canvas. And the referee began to count. One, two. Like most companies on their journey to excellence, Ali had acquired the best talent and tools in the fight industry, acquiring a world-renowned trainer by the name of Angelo Dundee and a benchmark cornerman, Bandini, whom helped him coin the phrase, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. You better watch out for Muhammad Ali. But the most important part of that quote was the last part. You can't hit what you can't see. Three, four, Muhammad Ali set up and he contemplated quitting. As fear began to set in. And he realized at that point, if you do not trust the process, one of two things will happen. Fear. Do you forget everything and run? Or do you trust the process and face everything and rise? And that's what I want to talk about, the people side of operational excellence. And it starts with respecting cultures. As you can see, hello is in different languages. Respect for the natives. Great leaders respect the people. I have a saying, if you make people visible, they will make you valuable. I want you to answer these questions for me in your daily management process. Does your daily management process clearly define what winning is? Does it align your team to win? And do you have a process to know when you're executing winning? But more importantly, do you inspire trust? That's interesting. I believe great teams give her, the organizations people 100%, 100% of people a voice. But can you answer that? What does the organization want to achieve? Do people know? Do they know how they contribute to winning in the enterprise? Do you have a process to recognize those that follow the process? So why didn't I want to go to Fayetteville? Look at the gap. They were making 31,000 tires a day and the market demand was 36,000 tires a day. And at that time, plants were closing across North America. And it was just a matter of time before Fayetteville was next. And so at that point, after I accepted the job, I didn't have no fanfare, I drove myself, and I, I spent the first two weeks on the back shifts. I had to go and see reality. Embrace reality, right? I, I, my mission was first to seek to understand before I sought to change. And so I went to the back shift, and here's what I found. A hidden factory. I had great people, but they didn't understand what winning was. There was little clarity around ownership and how they fit into the enterprise strategy roadmap. What clarity are you providing on your journey? And so at that point, I brought all of my leaders in the room, and that's what millions of pounds of stock looked like. And we started walking and looking at reality. And this is what started to happen in our plants. It started to look and feel like success. And we celebrated the red. We did not punish people for red. And so first, let's go back to the Fayetteville journey. What was the first thing we did? We defined winning. So what did we do? I interviewed a lot of the associates, and I asked what was the popular sport around there, and they said football. So we bought everybody a football jersey. Now, what's the number on the jersey? 38. That symbolized we wanted to get to 38,000 tires a day so we could have some headroom to the 36. Okay? Now, 
Everyone said, well, they're not going to wear those jerseys. I didn't buy the jerseys for them to wear. They were at Walmart. They were at church. Some gave them away. But if someone asked, what is the 38, what did they all say? That's the ticket we have to achieve. But notice how we incorporate the union logo, the company logo, and the choice. And this was the actual flyer. Now, there are better computer programs now, but that's all we had back then. All right? Once we define winning, we talk about who owned the plan. The formula for success is strategy plus execution equals results. So why do companies fail to execute? Because people do not know who owns what in the strategy. That's interesting. I went back to visit that plant, and they lined the aisles with those shirts on. Culture controls strategy. It doesn't eat strategy. It controls strategy. And most leaders struggle with letting go. They struggled with it. These two dogs were looking at the board, and it says, whenever you see gray, you're supposed to bark. Right? Well, dogs can't see red or, or green. So look what it said. So now what do you want me to do, Sensei? Those boards are just like your bulletin boards that you put on, on, on your shop floor. They're stuff that you want people to see. And you know what we do? I stand in front of a bulletin board whenever I go to a plant, and I walk 10 steps. Then I stop and wait for the next four people to walk by that work in that area. And then I ask them a simple question. So you know what, Curtis, what does that board mean to you? And you know what I normally get? The Scooby-Doo answer. <laughs> And so what good is the board? And you know what? They're looking like those dogs are looking. Make it visible. We had the 10 second rule. If we walked, if we walked on the shop floor and we couldn't understand it or decipher it in 10 seconds or less, it was too complicated. So we're going to do a little audience participation. And I like embarrassing people that look at their shoes when we do this. So I'm going to have everyone stand up and we're going to stretch. I'm going to make it, I want to see everybody, I'm looking, get, ahead and get your arms up, loosen up a little bit. We don't want any OSHA recordables or lost time injuries here. All right, so let me give you some standard work. Here's what we're going to do, because I know you have it. I've got a great team out there. Let me see first. When I say everybody ready, I want you to say ready. All right, here we go. Everybody ready? Ready. <sighs> okay, we're going to play Michigan next week. Everybody ready? ready. There we go. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the left, count of three, to stretch the body out to the right, count of three. Then we're going to do some spirit fingers, and then on the count of three, we're going to clap to wake the body up. Everybody ready? All right, good practice, good practice. All right, here we go. Ready? To the left, ready to go. One, two, three, to the right. One, two, three, in the middle, spirit fingers. Here we go, ready? One, two, three. Why did you clap on two? I said clap on three. <laughs> Somebody help me out. Why did you clap on two? Say it again. Oh, so people follow what you do before they follow what you say. So how are you modeling the way? Are you talking lean or are you acting lean? That's interesting. Have a seat, please. There were times that the environment wasn't desirable for some executives. But we did TPM projects, 5S projects. It's Billy. I'm in the middle of the picture. What am I doing? Trust, respect. Behaviors. You can see behaviors, but you can't see mindsets. You can't see what people are thinking. How do you get there? Create a process where you go and see reality. You interact with people. <laughs> because often what you see is not reality. And you need those things that are going to give you a reality check. How do you put people in the game? What's your process to recognize? 
Do you have a weekly cadence where you bring people in from the shop floor and celebrate their activities? Leverage networking, best practices. We celebrate the process, not the individual. We embrace the individual. Our newsletters are about the process, not the individual. You do one project, you get a bronze medal. Two, silver. Three, gold. Do 12 projects, you get platinum. Most people do not want to be liked or praised. They just want to be valued. And what happens when you do that? Here's what happened in that plan I was telling you about. On average of 32, they went to 38,000. But look what the hours work did. We're working approximately 14,500 hours to make 32,000 tires. We're making 13,900 to get 38,000. No investment, no additional equipment, just ownership. But in six months, look what they did. What you saw is sustainment. People say, you couldn't, you, there's no way you can get that, that type of improvement in that short time. It was always there. It was just hidden. It was a hidden factory. Now I have an entire footprint. How do I maintain that constancy of purpose? Remember when I said my safety manager? My, how do I have that same constancy of purpose? You know how? Transparency. Great leaders realize you cannot manage a secret. Our CEO says that all the time. You cannot manage a secret. You must have transparency, which breeds trust. Celebrate the red. When you celebrate the red, you gain trust. This is an example of a traditional company. 5% of the company, those leaders, they think they make things happen. 15% of those people watch things happen. And 80% of those people just wait for something to happen. They're not engaged. They really don't care. They're really ready to point blame. Traditional organizations, those progressive organizations are here. Progressive organizations, 80% of the people make things happen. 15% around strategy deployment. And that senior tier, they provide the vision and strategy. If you don't have consciousness or purpose, you'll be out of business. This is what it used to be like when I was in a plant coming up, new products. They throw the spec over the wall, I throw it back, you had almost a civil war. I still remember the saying we used to tell them, round and black and out the back, that's all we care about. Today, you will be out of business shortly thereafter. Because innovation is not a cost. It's how you grow your business. And yes, there are some bad ideas. <laughs> like, get over it, right? Because most of us fail at what we do. Failure is part of the process. Because you just fail forward. You just fail forward. That's how you stay in business. Now I run North America, it's still simple. Instead of my eight, I have 32. So I missed. Where did I miss? Plan B. Go back to 8421. There's the same thing. Now I'm back inside the plant again. Within 10 seconds, I'm all the way back to the operator now from my desk. And guess what? I still go celebrate the process. I still show up to celebrate the process. I have coins on my table I give. I never miss the opportunity to share best practice and show respect for the team. And here's what happened. Define winning. Our president said, we need more of the right tires at the right cost, right time, because we're evolving to grow. We had back orders. Look what happened to our back orders. 86% reduction by following the process. Our EBIT, look what it did. Those were the outputs, however. 
we were focusing on the inputs, the leading indicators is what drove it, but it has to be a way of life. Great organizations still believe that the best, the most powerful word in the world is no. It's just spelled differently. And it's a different mindset because look at that word there. Isn't that identical? But watch the mindset when I hit this button. Opportunity is now here. Because when I understand, embrace, I will take action. And the fact is, when I know better, I will do better. And that's what makes great organizations. That's how you sustain the game. 